Good morning, friends and neighbors. In the month of September, my husband John and I were, tried the Whole30 plan. And um, if you're not familiar with it, it's a diet plan where you reduce certain, eliminate certain things out of your diet, eat a lot cleaner, um, just kind of reset your system. Anyway, we loved it. It was, um, we felt great, we loved the food. Our youngest son still lives at home and he was being really supportive. Of course, he had to eat whatever we were eating, uh, but he was doing great with it. And Whole30 turned more into Whole40, Whole50. Again, we really enjoyed it. We added some things back in the last few days, but um, not a whole lot. And like I said, our son was being really supportive. He had to eat whatever we were eating until here lately, just a few days ago, um, he really started kind of dropping hints that, you know, he's really hoping that we can eat bread again and, you know, we, that I can handle eating bread again. And, you know, he really thinks that I'll do okay with, with it. And, um, you know, I mean, I did fine with it before, so I should do fine. And I had a hard time, you know, kind of figuring out, like, why is he trying to talk me out of doing this? Well, a couple of nights ago, we were talking about, you know, food, and he says, you know, to be honest, I'm kind of selfishly hoping that you can eat bread again. He missed our homemade bread. <laughs> so today, we're going to make him some bread. <laughs> A few years ago, we began to dream of a little homestead. We prayed, purchased a two and a half acre lot, and began to plant. Seven years later, we moved into our new home and started the work. This is South County Homestead, a place where we grow, we learn, and we bring you along. Because we learn better and we grow more when we're doing it together. This is not my easiest bread recipe, but it is our favorite bread recipe. It's called, and please forgive me, I'm probably mispronouncing it, but it's Hokkaido bread, which is a Japanese milk bread. And to make this, you have to first start with bread flour, as opposed to all-purpose flour. And you begin the process by using a little bit of that flour and adding water to it and cooking it on the stovetop and making that into a pudding. You will let that cool down and when it's cool, then you begin the process of making your bread, kneading your dough. That will be incorporated in the dough. And what that does, um, to my understanding, is it makes the bread a lot more elastic and just makes for a softer bread. So we like using this as our sandwich bread. Um, it is a pretty sweet bread, so when I make it for us to use as sandwich bread, I reduce the amount of sugar to half of what the recipe requires. I will include the recipe um, down in the description notes of this video so that you have it, and I will also in parentheses include the um, reduced option if you want to uh, make a bread that's not as sweet, that doesn't have as much sugar in it. We're starting with six and a third cups of flour. We're going to use one third of a cup in a small saucepan. Mix that with 200 milliliters or seven ounces of water. Slowly add the water as you mix. And you want to do this so that you don't end up with lumps in your pudding. Using a whisk also helps with this. You want a nice smooth texture. 
Once you have that, you can add the remainder of your water. Mix it well. Turn your stove top to medium heat. And stir it continually. This will seem like it's doing nothing for quite a while, but once it begins to cook and thicken, that happens very quickly. So it really doesn't take long to do this. This took about seven to eight minutes to cook it completely. And you can see it's, it's nice and um, looks like a pudding. From this point, we're going to cover it up, remove it from heat, and let it cool down completely. All right, our pudding or roux has been cooling for about the last 30 minutes, so it's nice and room temperature now. You don't want it refrigerator cold, but you want it to be cool. We're gonna go ahead and move on with um, the rest of our ingredients. So we have our yeast, four and a half teaspoons of yeast, and sugar. Remember I said I was only going to use half the sugar recommended? The recipe calls for a half cup of sugar. I only have a quarter of a cup. I'm going to use about half of that and mix it in with my yeast. Sugar helps your yeast to activate. So if you have a recipe that calls for yeast and sugar, it helps to mix them together. I've already warmed up my milk. This is 250 milli milliliters of um, whole milk and you want it at about 108, 110 degrees. Not hot, because you don't want it to kill your yeast. Mix it well, and then you will let this sit for about seven to eight minutes until the yeast activates and it gets really nice and big and bubbly. All right, leave that alone. While that's happening, I have the remainder of my flour. I have the uh, butter, which is 60 milligrams. This recipe is written in grams and milliliters. It's written in metric measure. But when I write the recipe in the description, I will include both the um, standard US measurements and um, metric. Salt, two teaspoons. Mix that in a little bit. The remainder of the sugar. There we are. Mix that in a little bit. Two eggs. You will need a third egg later on to brush over the top of the bread. There we are. And the roux. 
or pudding. There we go. We'll wait for our yeast to finish activating. As you can see, the yeast has definitely activated. It's nice and bubbly, and that's really what you want. So I'm going to add that to my bowl. And start mixing. Now my friends often ask me if I have a bread maker. I don't, I am the bread maker. And really guys, I've been doing this, well not this specific bread recipe, but just making bread for many, many years. So if it takes you a little bit to master the, the kneading and just all of it, don't be intimidated by it, just be patient with yourself. There's always the debate of how long you should knead your bread dough. In my personal experience, it depends on how practiced you are at it. If you've been doing this for a while, the, that dough is going to come together for you a lot faster than if you're brand new. So just be patient with yourself and know that. If you have a powerful KitchenAid mixer that does kneading for you, hey, that's fantastic. No judgment here but I like kneading it by hand. And one of the reasons I like doing that is I really get a feel for the dough and what it's supposed to feel like. You can see right now, it's really crumbly, like it's barely coming together as a dough. And you're going to notice over the next few minutes as I knead it, that that's going to change a lot. It's going to become um, nice and elastic. It'll pull together well. So that's, that's what we're going for. While I'm doing this, I want to tell you um, something about my table here. This is our kitchen dining room table. And I've always wanted a custom made table because five foot three. But because I like making my own bread and I like kneading a lot, it helps if I'm hovering over my dough. If I have to do it on the countertop, it's too high and I don't have enough upper body strength to really do a good job. So I really want to get on top of it and, and knead it well. And to do that, the table has to be right about hip level. So I wanted to build a table and my sweet, sweet niece, whom I miss very much because now she moved out of state, helped me. Um, with this. So we bought the butcher block tabletop um, from Lowe's, which is fantastic. I didn't realize they sold those and when I found it I got very excited about it. <laughs> and we got some 2x4s and some 2x6s and she came over one day um, and hung out with me and she and I built a custom made what I call a working table because even though this is our kitchen and dining table I, I do a lot of work on it so it had to be pretty solid I love it love my table okay so can you guys see how this is coming together how it's nice and elastic it's not crumbly I mean it's really you know it's not sticking to my hand it's not sticking to the bowl. It's just really, really pulled together. And that's not to say that that can't happen with an electric mixer. Again, no judgment. If you use an electric mixer, that's fantastic. One of these days when I grow up, I might end up getting one of those nice big mixers too. But for now, I don't mind using my hand. I actually kind of like it. And 
this is just about ready. You can you can feel if it's if it's ready or not. If it feels lumpy, that everything is not worked through well, then you need to keep kneading it a little bit more. But if it feels nice and smooth and elastic, then you're good to go. So you can probably tell that I've only been kneading this for a few minutes. Again, there's some debate as to how long um, you should knead your bread. Again, I'm not an expert on it. I probably don't need my bread as long as recommended, but I've never had any complaints. All right, there we go. I'd say that is nice and ready. I'm going to add a little bit of oil to the top of it. Flip it upside down. And the reason for this is because it will help it to not stick to the bowl. So when I'm ready to pull this out to for my loaves, the dough will uh, be nice and loose and I won't have to scrape it off of the bowl. So once it's at this stage, you want to Place it in a nice warm place away from your vents if you have air conditioning. I place mine in the oven with the oven light on. So that way it gives it a little more warmth and it rises a little bit better. So I'm going to place this in the oven. You don't want to turn the oven on, but just place it in the oven, turn on the oven light, and leave it in there for about 45 minutes or so. Check on it at about 30 minutes and see how it's doing. You want it to get to about twice its size. So, you know, we'll, we'll bring it up to right about right there on our bowl. So once it doubles in size, then we're ready for the next step. Isn't that beautiful? Look at how nice and fluffy it is. I just love it. All right, so I have two bread pans and these are ceramic. I'm going to coat both of them with some clarified butter. Clarified butter is butter that has had the dairy removed from it. using to roll my bread dough out. This was given to me by my brother. Thank you, Bubba. I'm pouring oil on the slab to keep my dough from sticking. Dump it out. You see how nice um, oiling that pan, that bowl made this um, just for taking it out. And I'm going to cut it in two. Spread each one out. And I want it to be about the width of my bread pan. You'll see why in just a little bit. The length can be as long as you want it. And 
then I begin to roll it. And tuck it in, press it down a bit. That's one. And two. We're going to put this uh, back away from a draft and into a warm place and let this rise for about another 45 minutes. Aren't those beautiful? Well, I have my oven set to 350. While the oven is heating, I'm going to use the last egg Give it a good beating. And this really makes this bread kind of what it is. And then we gently brush this over the top. Once the temperature is up to 350, place these in your oven on the middle shelf. And bake for about 30 to 35 minutes until the top is a nice golden brown. I pulled these out of the oven a couple of minutes ago so they'd be sitting in the pans. Before I take them out, I want to go along the edges with a knife to make sure that they're not sticking to the edges. Carefully turn them out and let them sit on their side. We all like a slice of nice hot bread, but if I slice these right now, they're too hot. So the dough is going to get sticky, and that's not what you want in a good slice of bread. So we want to let these sit for about 15-20 minutes until they could cool down just a little bit, and then they'll make some nice slices. Fantastic. Now that our bread has cooled, we can go ahead and slice it up. I love the texture. I hope you guys can see how thin I'm slicing these slices. And look at that texture. It's nice and soft, flexible. This would be perfect for a sandwich. I'm going to finish slicing this loaf and see if I can find someone around here to taste it. Well, what do you know? Here comes our little taste tester now. Come on, Bubba. I ironically call me little. <laughs> no. um, okay, so how do you like your bread? Usually with butter and salt. With butter and salt. 
Okay, there we go. Add your butter. Mm. Just to clarify, usually I do this myself. Yes, <laughs> but you know, for video. For video purposes, it helps to have it in yes. the camera. <laughs> Give us your honest opinion, sir. It's really good. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your honest opinion? I say so. Hmm. Can you give us a little bit more analytical <laughs> opinion? Can you do a deep analysis of that slice of bread? Look, I asked you if you wanted me to do it. You said it didn't matter. So, do, you, do you want me to? Do you want me to do yeah, that? Sure, why not? All right. Texture is great. It has a very soft, fluffy texture. Very helpful. Makes for good sandwich bread or just bread in general. Um, flavor of the bread isn't too overpowering or anything like that. Again, good for sandwich or anything like that. If any of you are watching this and you have not tried bread with just butter and salt on it, you need to. It is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go, folks. I think he likes it. All right. uh, <laughs> <laughs> He's going to go eat his bread now. Uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming along with us on this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. Please subscribe to our channel so that you can be notified of future videos. Until next time, y'all have a blessed day. Bye-bye.